Hi everyone, James Sigler here to share some creative patching with the Make Noise Brucia. Strega here is one of my favorite patchable and uh, touchable synths that has come around in a very long time. And when I found out the heart of the Strega was going to be available in a module, I got very excited to see how it worked within such a different context. It operates the exact same, but under the influence of totally different signals, it shapeshifts and adapts to its new surroundings. What's integral to the sound of Strega becomes something like a sonic pathogen integrating into its new host and evolving it into a newer form. And while it's natural to approach Brucia like a lo-fi or extreme character delay effect, I want to explore beyond that and look in some of my favorite uses of Brucia. Inspired by how I use that section in Strega, but influenced by the other entities in its new host. I like to call this one analog granular. Not because it's granular in any way, but it's often how I would use granular. It focuses on some sort of scale, some sort of running arpeggio. It's going to give you an overall tone. And what Brucia is going to do is just smear it all over the place. Kind of like a harmonic reverb. And if you could find the right timing of the arpeggio and the delay, kind of get this wonderfully smeared pad. Could take some clock divisions from Tempe here. Start to destabilize Brucia a little bit. Adjusting the filter. Disturbing the time a little bit. can always layer the original arpeggio back in a little bit with the blend control. And I really love using a filter like the Cupas on the end because you can really accentuate the character coming out of Ruscio. This is one I like to affectionately call the Howler. So we have a self-oscillating Brucia, which I just impulsed with a little bit of input. You can do something with a tonal input. You can do little clicks into it. It's gonna change the texture depending on how you get it self-oscillating. But with the decay all the way up, it will eventually just start howling. And the cool thing is the way the filter design works is it's kind of 
in the feedback loop in a way. It's not just a filter at the end. So as we disturb time and filter and absorb, which kind of is like the resonance a bit of the filter, not, that's kind of how I think about it, even though that's probably not really how it works. Um, but it changes kind of the texture and the gain around the center point of the filter frequency. So to me, that's a little bit like resonance. Um, we can kind of disturb this howl and kind of create this complex noise. I like to feed that again through a QPOS to kind of tailor that some more. And a really fun thing to do once you get this really complex noise going is use it for percussion. Some of my most favorite snare sounds so far that I've made on a modular have been using the Brucia as the noise source. So let's kick into it. I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, time division gates here to modulate Brucia and get that noise evolving. Now let's gate it. Got a gate pattern here from Renee too. Can get a lot more extreme here now with our absorb decay filter settings. And then if we use something like the QPOS, which has multiple resonant peaks, we can really start to tailor this. And if we feed some more input into Brucia, it'll start to react. Using the CB outs of Brucia can also be super helpful. That's the howler. I call this one the beat destabilizer. Um, we've got some sort of percussive pattern going into Brucia. Doesn't have to be actually percussive. You could experiment with short impulses and, and longer tones. Medium kind of delay time. Do your best to kind of synchronize it, but it doesn't have to be synchronized. Just kind of have like a, a rhythm to it. Um, and it can take a really simple input and end up with this really complex output. Um, for more tempo-based stuff, use a lot of clock divisions to do your modulation like I'm doing here from time divisions from the Tempe. Um, make good use of the CV outputs patched back to its own input. That adds to this sort of destabilization effect. Again, I really love using the filter on the output to kind of just chew on that character that comes out of Brucia. 
And to really sell it home here, uh, it's going through an actual tempo uh, lock to delay the Mimeo phone. Experiment with longer input tones. There's definitely a lot of drive available on the input of Brucia, so play around with your input volume. This one, I wish I had a little bit more creative name for than the Double Witch, but that's what I call it. Uh, we're using Strega here as a second Brucia. We're not using the tone generator here, um, and they're running in stereo. So the output of the Spectrophone is being molted into the Brucia on the left channel, and through Strega on the right, I'm cross-patching their CV outputs to each other. Um, I'm actually using the sub out on the spectrophone to audio rate modulate both filters some more modulation in and i'll kind of play around with some stuff by hand but um, this makes for a pretty amazing stereo field
One last thing I wanted to touch on was some tips for adding spice to your brucia patches. Um, the first I would suggest is some kind of sub-octave or audio rate modulation of filter. It can really accentuate some of that low fineness depending on the audio signal that's going in or how many sub-octaves below. You could end up with this sort of growly emphasis on the fundamental. All stuff that sounds good. Similarly, modulating time. Short pulses and envelopes to the time parameters also can kind of give this little whack and wiggle to some of the time. Adding again to more of that destabilized lo-fi sound. The way absorb and filter work in this kind of like resonant peak thing, I think sounds awesome when you're using some kind of sequence. And last but certainly not least, using the CV outs to do something, either the post Brucia filter or even something that alters the input timbre. tuning in. Hope you enjoyed. Happy patching. Thank you.